Hello and welcome to the YouTube channel of Transition Career Solution. Today we are going to discuss topography map 45D by 10, Eastings moving from 11 to 21 and Northings moving from 13 to 23. Now let's see what questions can we refer to this map. The first question which we are going to discuss is related to finding four figure grid reference of two things. First is written bracket south of Pamera and the second is location of a settlement Malgao. Let's see referring to our map. First we are going to find out the word brackish written south of Pamera. So first look at the map and find the location of the settlement Pamera. The settlement Pamera is in the grid 22 Sorry, it's in the grid 1622. Now, it's written south of it where the word brackish is written. So the word brackish is written in this grid square. Now this grid square is 1621. 16 is your easting and 21 is your northing. So whenever you're going to write the four figure grid reference or the six figure grid reference, first you're going to write the eastings and then comes your northings. So your eastings are 16 and your northings are 21. The very next question is asking a four figure grid reference for the settlement Malgao. For the settlement Malgao you can see it's on the border line of both 16 and 15 easting. So either you can write 15 or 16 and then your northings are mentioning at 20. So you have two answers, you can write 1520 as your four figure grid or 1620 as your other answer. The next question we are going to deal and find out about the six figure grid reference. Again there are two questions of finding. First is at temple at Andhra and the second is 3R near Silvara settlement. So firstly we are going to find about the temple at Andhra. To find out the six figure grid reference, firstly we need to know the four figure grid. That is, for the temple at Andhra, you have your four figure grid is your 16 and your that is your easting and your northings are 15. So that is your four figure grid. Now let's find out the six figure grid for it. So this is your temple at Andhra. With the help of your scale, you need to make 10 divisions of your lines that is we all know that this line and this line both is equals to 2 centimeter for every two for every two division mark it so you will have an equal of 10 divisions so i have already done over here so let's see 16 is your first two digit the third digit for your six figure grid reference will come up to three See, I've marked the points 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So first three points over here is joining your temple. That is your third digit for your six figure grid reference. And again, 10 division have been joined here. At this division 7, it is passing the temple. So your total six figure grid reference is equals to 16, 3, 15, 7. 3 and 7 are your add-on 6-figure grid reference. Same goes for your next question that is 3R that is the relative height of a perennial well near Silvara. Your 6-figure grid reference is coming up to 11, 7, 17, 1. 11 and 17 are your 4-figure grid. 7 we are getting from here that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 it is coming to the 7th division and 1 is coming from your here that is the first division which is crossing 3R. So that is how you get your 6 figure grid reference. The next question is asking what is the main occupation of the people living in the area shown in the map extract. To find out the main occupation, firstly you need to look at the presence of colors over here. You can see in the map you basically see four colors, yellow, red, black and white. A little bit of green is also present, extreme southeast. Red lines are basically for settlements and transport. 
black lines are drainage pattern and depicting the non perennial rivers and water bodies white space is showing the barren land and most of your map is covering with yellow color the yellow color signifies the cultivated area so we can say that most people practice agriculture and the main occupation of the people living is agriculture so if for the reason of this you can give that the presence of yellow color signifies that the people practice more of agriculture okay the next question is asking what type of rainfall is received by the region give suitable evidence to support your answer so we know water bodies are of two types one is perennial wells which will show sorry perennial water bodies which will have a presence of color blue and then we have non perennial water bodies which will have color in black dots so in the map you can see mostly the rivers are of black color that is presence of black dots are there so we know it is a non perennial river and the uh, rivers will have water body only when there is rainfall so these are uh, seasonal rivers so we can give an evidence that the presence of dry river beds dry tanks presence of islands that is white patches in the river are specifying that the region receives seasonal rivers the next question is asking what type of trees are found in the region shown by the map extract if you find one specific type of tree drawn in your map like these green small little trees drawn you can look at the section below the map over here as you have been shown there have been specifies as to what type of plants or trees are found you can refer to them and if you do not get a specific one type of tree you have variety of type of tree then don't name them right mix vegetation present the next question is asking identify the drainage pattern in grid square 1422 now we are talking about this drainage pattern which is in black line these are basically not 90 degree either it is coming from a contour line it is normal a pattern of a tree like structure like branches coming out so this is basically known as the dendritic drainage pattern system there can be a theory question also students given in your map extract that express the meaning of 1 is to 50000 printed below the map extract which depicts your total covering area that means it means one unit on the map represents 50000 units on the ground it also known as the representative fraction that is rf that's it you need to write nothing more than that now moving on to the next question which is saying identify the settlement pattern in grid square 1622 and 1690 for this we again need to go back to our map Okay the two settlement patterns have been given one is we are talking about the pattern over here in 1622 we can see the settlement patterns are very closely intact to each other so we can say it as a compact settlement or nuclear settlement and the next pattern which is said in the grid system that is 1619 we are talking about here here you can see that the red squares are dispersed from each other they are not very closely packed rather they are far away from each other so therefore this is known as dispersed settlement the next question is asking what is the main mode of transport as shown in the map so the main mode of transport which is shown in this map is car track you can see presence of red lines which is joining two places over here even it is written that motorable in dry season basically it is written for that so these are the lines which actually draw joins two places and it is the main mode of transport going from one place to the other so car track in this map is the main mode of transport Next question is asking give the direction of the temple present near Hathal that is in the grid 1418 here the temple is present from the village Pamera so the village Pamera is present here from Pamera 
what is the direction if we have to move towards this temple present in Hatil? So the direction is we are moving towards south and it is reflected towards west. The so direction will be southwest. First now we need to find the direction between the two places that is Silvara in the grid 1116 and Malgao in the grid 1620 with the help of the direct method. So with the direct method we just need the help of the scale. So we will take the scale, we will put the first line over here in the center and the second very quickly we will mark it over here. So if you can see our distance of both the centers are coming to 11. So we'll be taking 11 centimeter of the total distance which we are calculating with the help of the scale. So if we are getting 11 centimeter with the help of the scale, we all know that one centimeter on the map represents 500 meter on the ground. Or we can say that two centimeter on the map equals to one kilometer on the ground. So 11 centimeter is equals to 500 into 11, which is equals to 5,500 meters. Or we can write it as five kilometers, 50 meters as your answer. Moving on to the next question. The next question is asking, what is the main mode of irrigation in the region? Justify your answer with example. So to look into the main mode of irrigation, if we look at our rivers, our rivers are dry, they are seasonal rivers. So only one main mode of irrigation which we can see are presence of perennial lined wells, which is the presence of blue dots in the map. You can see over here, they all are blue dots. These are perennial lined wells. So these are the water bodies which actually help in the main mode of irrigation throughout the year. Now moving on to the other questions on conventional signs as to what these symbols suggest. So the first question is asking in the grid 1221 that is here what is this 275 means. Now if you see where 275 is written there is a symbol like tree drawn over here in black color. These are known as survey trees. So wherever you see these kinds of trees drawn with numbering these are prominent survey trees which have a marking of their heights and if a tree is present without any numbering so those are not survey trees so over here the answer is prominent survey tree next question is asking what is a causeway written in grid square 1870 causeway are supposed to be raised metal roads or platform across a minor stream or a low-lying marshy area at a shallow point. So this is your answer for this question. And the very last question relating to this is what does the term brackish means which is present in the grid 1620. Now brackish word written be beside any water body signifies that the water body contains salt and it is unfit for drinking whether it is with beside a perennial water body or non-perennial body it doesn't depend it brackish word written that the water is unfit for drinking so students we have finished discussing important some some of the important questions which are common to your papers for 45 d by 10 i hope it had made things clear for you the answers and questions to these have been given in the PDF in your description box so you can download from there. There is a prior video made on 45D by 7 and already in the Transition Career Solution YouTube channel there is a video on topography which is dealing with the theory part and the practical parts which is important relating to your topography. So if you need any help you can go and watch this video please. Thank you so much.